Independent business ideas. I, I talked about if people are on the dole about a bit of motivation stuff, but I just want to go through a list of things that I recommend if you're looking at getting started or there's no work in your area. The reality is there may not be a job, but there is always work. It's just finding it. Um, the first thing I would recommend is speak to local businesses and find out what they need. Years ago, I had a furniture place. I used to sell my own furniture, manufacture custom-made tables and stuff. And another furniture place in Worcester, because I was out at Kemsey, I think. No, it wasn't Kemsey. Lysington. It was, I'm outside of Worcester, let's put it that way. Um, but this guy needed deliveries of his goods, but couldn't find anybody reliable. So I did it at a flat rate of £13 and just stuck it on my deliveries doesn't sound a lot does it 13 pounds but if i said three and a half thousand pounds a week in deliveries that's how much i used to make um just doing their deliveries on top of my own uh how much of that is profit uh i would say about 2800 pounds of it uh, because because of the type of clients they had some of the items are literally this size they are things like a leather giraffe or a hippo it's very um specific you get some heavy bookcases now and again but let's just say 90 percent of it i could deliver on my own and as such it was quite a good good little earner uh, but that you only get those sort of things by contacting people in the area go around and ask them what they're struggling with it could be like getting rid of rubbish it could be that they have a problem with the alarm going off at the weekend they might just want somebody to pop around and reset it there's lots of little things that make a company's life easier and puts money in your pocket um it could be running to the supermarket for them once a week to get their milk and tea but it may not sound right but if you're in one of these areas where they have an industrial site that has no real shop in the area, they have like a burger van or whatever, but they still want tea and coffee and bits and pieces, you could find a hundred places on there that would use you to do the running around, um, just as an example. The same goes for speaking to local property owners. There's a lot of tasks people want doing. Windows washing. Um, damaged window frames just puttying up and tidying up giving an outside a bit of a paint maybe painting the, the inside um, jet cleaning the driveway washing the cars there's lots of little tasks on a new housing estate one of the good ones is numbers because housing estates generally don't come with a house number it's normally on the ground because the plot number isn't the same as the house number because the allocation is different so they may get the house and their number is absolutely nothing so if you can come along with some nice ceramic designs and put numbers on it there could be an easy money maker on there and they'll have it because you're already there uh, look at old ideas while everyone looks at the new this is why I ended up in engineering and facilities management many years ago I could see the money was there because everyone wants to wear a nice suit everybody wants to ponce around in the office looking important and often don't know anything um, but the reality is even things like unblocking toilets it's a horrible job but it's a premium rate job because it's a horrible job um, locksmithing can be a good little job on the side not a full-time job don't recommend it full-time unless you're actually established but as a sideline I used to make about 700 pounds a week um, every week just doing locksmithing that's on the average but I can make that 700 in one day it's just that over the week you might get the odd one it depends on what week it is but when I was doing on call for another company at the same time I was getting up at 2 or 3 in the morning anyway uh, it's easier to market a existing idea rather than a new one. For example, if you've just come out with a widget, you need to really explain what a widget does. But if you turn around and are selling car cleaning, car valeting, uh, 
washing windows, that sort of stuff. Everybody already knows what it is. A lot of the people, though, in those trades sort of died out, literally. You know, they, they retire. And unless they've got somebody to pass it on to, it's a trade where you can drop straight into it. It's like house cleans and office cleans. Setting up in yourself, you can make a good income on it because a lot of people just don't do the effort because a lot of it's down to going in, knocking on doors and getting the customers to talk to you. Network your people and ideas. Getting people together is an important aspect of this. I struggle with some... I've got several people that want to utilize my ideas, but I struggle with um, getting enough people bringing good ideas into the group. Um, it's something I want to expand on. I'm going to do another video on that. But there is always a government-funded um, networking business group. It's like my niece is in the Worcester's women's business group. and all the Get into them. And a lot of time, they do have a lot of pompous people in there. But that doesn't matter. You've got a lot of good people in there as well. You may have to go to the seminar because they've had some funding from whatever. doesn't matter. You will learn something. You will learn something. You may find 70% of it's waffle, but you will learn something. Get yourself in there. Get noticed. Talk to people about your business. What they, And this is where you get the engagement to ask them, what do they think? Because most of them, well, 99% of them, will own their own businesses. The other 1% will be tied in with the actual organising of the event. But when you go, what do you think of it? They'll put something forward because they already have their business. So they're not going to be trying to steal your little idea or whatever. They're going to go, yeah, that's good. Or, I don't know, I can't see that working. But even, even if they say, can't see it working, ask them why. What, would, what can I do to make it work for you? And that's what you need to do. And ultimately, keep it simple. When you're talking to these people, keep it simple. When you're selling something, keep it simple. Um, a lot of this stuff these days is sold on technology and is overcomplicated. The average person does not need to have overcomplicated things to explain to them. They're not interested. Um, it's like when you're explaining an idea... Keep it to the most simple context possible. I've had arguments with people about this in the corporate world where they've got documentation that's this thick in A4, and I say, who is it for? Because if it's for the client, they're not going to read it. If it's for an engineer, it needs to be specific to what they're doing. It needs to be simple. If it's not, you're going to struggle to use it. Don't expect to be a millionaire. People end up a millionaire. They don't go out with the original concept and idea of, I want to be a millionaire, because the motivation's different. The, the re reality is, I, I hear this from marketing people, because they push, be a millionaire, be a millionaire, be a millionaire. But often, the, uh, the stuff they're selling is absolute crap. Overpriced, rubbish. Vitamins, for example, I find is one of those things that Generally, most people do not need because a balanced diet will sort most things out. Reality is most people do not have a balanced diet. So are you better off selling the balanced diet or better off selling vitamins? They obviously push the vitamins. Um, but it's all about the pricing. And if you're going out there to take people's money and make as much as possible, then that's a millionaire approach. If you're looking at building a long-term business, then I would say go in there is something that you believe in, something you enjoy, something you want to do, and something you can progressively develop into something you really want to be doing. Because um, you often you'll start off with something that is low budget to where you want to be, and you can develop in stages. How are you going to market it? This is another key element. Marketing is something people often overlook. Sticking an ad in the newspaper is often an expensive waste of time. Uh, the same with leaflets. Leaflets have a 1% to 3% return. I would say lead generation in a very specific way is more important by doing some research. Like I said, get yourself downtown with a clipboard and go and annoy people. Ask them what would they think about your idea and just say look I'm sorry to bother you I'm starting a new business do not say it like a marketeering person that will turn around and bug people 
for the next 40 questions. Go in there and say, look, I would really love your input. I'm starting a new business and I would just love to put it to you, see what you think about it because I just want to make it personal, you see, because all the marketing ones are looking for, I'm going to sign you up on uh, this charity. I'm going to do this because it's been hammered, hammered, hammered because they got a formula that worked and they've abused it to the max. You want to make it more personal that this is my business. I, you know, I know your time is really precious, but can you just give me five minutes? May only take two even. Um, that sort of stuff is more likely to work. But also you need to understand what type of person is interested. Is it a business person? Is it um, going to be more eventful to use things like LinkedIn? Is it better to walk around an industrial estate? Is it to canvas housing estates? Is it talking to your local pizza guy and ask them, can they put a leaflet with every pizza? Lots of little ideas. LinkedIn, I mentioned that a minute ago, is a major source of business leaders and um, the decision makers. This isn't suitable for all products, I'll tell you that now, because most of these people hear crap all day long. Most of them do not log into LinkedIn. They have other people writing a lot of their stuff on LinkedIn. Um, but what you want to do is focus on some articles that are specific. Um, for example, if you're a cleaning business in Cheltenham, get yourself a LinkedIn web page and put all your information on there and try and feed as much info in there that can draw people towards you and engage with them. Um, there's a whole nother ream of things you can do with that, but you want to focus on that for that specific type of business um, if you're commercially orientated. Retail or um, domestic, it's a little bit different. I don't think LinkedIn will be that great a source, but it doesn't mean don't do it. Uh, because it's free. It's free to get on there. It's free to get that set up. So just do it. But I would say for domestics, Facebook. Get yourself a Facebook page. Make it very generic. Cheltenham cleaning or whatever. Something that instantly gets people to find it with a keyword search at the top. And get the information on there. Get yourself some videos going. Videos need to be on these things. Um, people generally avoid videos. They don't like being in videos. But even if you simply put some music and just video you doing something. Um, there was a bank in the Philippines this week um, that was being dragged into a scandal. The guy is one of the heads of the bank. He didn't speak on the video. He just had some captions, closed captions on the bottom. But it's like, I'm here, look at me, I'm important, and it worked. So you don't have to speak. There is ways around it. And with YouTube, uh, sorry, Facebook, that's often better because most of the videos that you find on Facebook, people don't watch with sound on anyway. They'll see them as they drag down the auto play. That's what you want. Something that catches people's imagination straight away. Things like tea and coffee um, are nothing more than good marketing. Um, you find a lot of the products today are branded rather than quality. It's why you're finding things like Aldi and Lidl are starting to dominate certain markets in the UK and Tesco sitting there going, how are we going to fix this? The reality is because Tesco's sold itself as a brand, split into sub-markets and stuff, it lost its direction completely. It lost quality. I hate Tesco's. I'll be honest with you, I hate Tesco's. It, it become more of an Iceland than a supermarket. It sort of downsized its, its business model. It went very strange. If you're going for branding, what you need to do is spend it in the right areas. The first thing is people want quality. The next thing is they want price. So you've, you've got to balance those two. So you need to do your research on what others are charging for similar services in the same area. I wouldn't advise undercutting them because that's only cutting your own money down long term. What you want to try and do is do the same sort of deal. Um, but it may pay the... In, for example, let's just say somebody charges £12 an hour for house cleaning. 
maybe you could charge ten pound an hour for the first month then it goes up to 12 because you're not trying to undercut people you're trying to get yourself your foot in the door with customers but build yourself on reputation that's why I said tea and coffee because people buy them from Aldi and Lidl they're not branded you don't recognize half the names but people are still buying them and yes I do buy my own specific coffees etc but it's not because of brand it's about flavor it's quality which gets me on to the last point how are you going to stand out everybody else has specific things that make them important um, you need to look at what makes you different what makes you stand out and although I say quality and pricing is important you also need to be able to turn around where people go I want you to do it and that comes from looking at what makes you better is it professional appearance is it a nice vehicle you know having a nice van well organized well equipped is it that you have good feedback and customer relations do you have your twitter account where people can engage with you and book a last minute order and you're quite happy to take the orders on there is a lot of things that can make your business better than others I'll give you an example of where we picked up a load of colleges for fire alarm systems before. There was a very large international global company that we, well, they had the contracts originally. They lost them for something very, very stupid. Um, they were not interested in any jobs under £30,000. So you've got to bear in mind, these are gold. They're service contracts. The service contracts just roll every year, same weeks, same thing, year in, year out, blah, 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 easy money. And the problem is they had some new constructions. Uh, one college had a new um, art block built and needed a quote, and, a, and this was their contractor. They weren't even replying to the emails or phone calls. Another building, um, another college had, I think it was 14 or 15 um, new accommodation blocks. Each accommodation block has a £15,000 fire alarm panel. But because they were built in phases, they didn't take the work. And we had these guys call us up from the one college saying, look, can you come in and alter this system for us because... We just need the one uh, new building added. But if you do that, we'll, we'll be very happy. And we're saying, well, don't you have a contractor? Yes, we do, but they won't do it. And we'll do it as a one-off. So we went there and did what they asked. And the next thing is the office of the service contract. Because obviously it's on a five-year renewal. Why did they give it to us? Was it because we were spectacular in our sales or anything? It's because we did the other building. The result being that they then put our name forward for the other contractors at the other colleges over the next 10 years. I think we ended up with those. There is other businesses we were involved in. But the point being is word of mouth was our main selling point because it was quality of service. It was never letting the customer down. They had 24-hour response, etc., etc. There was a lot of things that the big boys in the global market uh, wouldn't do unless there was a premium attached to every single little item. Um, having access to a mobile phone number of an on-call engineer costs £600 a year. Uh, so little things like that. But you've got to bear in mind, they're also charging for the call-out £200 minimum for the first, I think it was the first hour. And then it was an ongoing fee at a high rate. We did pretty well out of it, but the fact is, there's a lot of reasons you can pull customers to you without actually doing a lot. It's all about doing it right, having the right appearance, the right organization, putting things in a way that presents yourself as better than everybody else without ramming it down their throats. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.